everybody. So, another video with news from us. There is a lot of news. So, where, the last place where we left off, I think, was um, I think our puppies just died, so that's depressing. Anyway, that's ages ago by now. Uh, in the meantime, we lost another two animals. One kitten, which was killed by a tomcat, and the mother cat, which I had had since I was 12. So that's all very sad. Um, we still have two kittens though, so that's nice. So, uh, that's what's up with our animals. That was a bad way to start a video, but I'm sorry, I have to be a bit quick because I'm filming on my phone and the storage is not very great. So, that's the news about the animals. On the one hand, really sad. On the other hand, we still have two kittens and I love them, so that's cool. Um, then, other news. Well, um, first we had a holiday. Uh, in uh, si We were sitting uh, at the house of our friends. And they had a swimming pool, and that was really nice, so we really enjoyed that. But then the, at the end of the holiday, my dad got malaria, so we had to stay an extra day. And then when we were just about to leave, the rains were coming, so we couldn't load up the car. But we did have to leave, because the roads were going to become very bad. And so we all uh, packed every, as much as we could in there, but we couldn't bring the camera and some other stuff. So that's still over there, and we're arranging for it to be brought again. But, uh, so then all of, uh, four of the children were in the middle seat and three people were in the front seat, so that was pretty funny, but at least I wasn't in a hot car. So that's how we went back to our village after the holiday. And then there did, there was a storm and our house leaked, but it wasn't really bad for us. It was more bad in Tana, which is the capital here. Uh, cause in Tana there, it's like really, um, if there's rain, it's gonna go to the lowest places, and here the lowest place is the valley with the rice fields, and the rice fields will survive a flooding very easily. But, you know, in Tana, the lowest places is the slums, so, you know, a whole bunch of people drown. But like I said, we didn't really experience any of that. Um, then what happens? Then there was a big funeral of a Christian lady in our village, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because it was a lady we kind of knew, and we went to her funeral, and it was really interesting because in the Netherlands and other places in Europe, you uh, have you keep your emotions in, and there are certain and there are certain moments where you're expected to keep your emotions in, and if the emotions do come, you're only supposed to let them out if it's um, uh, convenient. Well, here you've got certain occasions when it's expected for you to let your emotions out, um, and this means that if you go to a funeral, you will see women who pick up their uh, clothes in other shirts. Like their lamba, which is like kind of um, like a sari, but it, it's it's you know a piece of cloth that they wrap cloth that they wrap around their waists, and they pick up this piece of cloth and they throw it in front of their faces, and then they just start crying and wailing and all in, like kind of like a speech about who this person was and why they loved them so much and what they meant to them. So that was really um, I was gonna say impressive, um, yeah, impressive, you know, to see that. Um, for men, it's more that they're more expected to go sit in a corner and look glum. But this lady's son was the only person in the village at the time. And he was really young and he had to deal with, you know, setting up the funeral, getting people to come and... Well, not getting people to come, but, uh, you know, um, when people came, he had to say hi and everything. So he was really sad and he cried a lot. And that was really impressive because, you know, I've never heard any, any adult cry like that. So that was the first time for me. Um, anyway... Then the uh, the whole family of the lady came, and uh, she was in another city, the lady, so they had to bring her over here. And then the family came, and then this lady, the dead lady's daughter, um, was pregnant, and she was about to get a baby. And the, I don't know whether you rem remember that video, but there was a baby here who got born, but then the doctor forgot to cut the umbilical cord, so the baby just kind of bled to death. Oh, they cut the umbilical cord, but didn't clip it. So the baby bled to death. So, you know, you don't, you don't want to give birth in our area. So they wanted to go to a different city. And we, my dad decided, well, we can give them a ride because we were thinking, what are we going to do for these people? And we couldn't really think of anything because usually they already get money, food, everything. So this was a favor we could do them. So my dad and my little sister got in the car. They first they only had six people in the back. They did not. There were eleven people who just in the in the chaos, just in the hustle and bustle, just went inside that car. So yeah, this is illegal, by the way. But uh, I don't know whether that's counting the baby actually. But anyway, I think a total of fourteen people in the car if you count the baby. So then they um, 
dropped the lady off at the hospital and she got a baby. The baby was healthy. And this is good because this was the first healthy baby after three miscarriages. So then they went back and two of the ladies who had come along went back as well. So they didn't really stay because she, she gave birth after they left. So they just wanted to come along for the ride and they kept throwing up. So I guess, you know, I can't really blame them because they never get the chance to go in a car. But I feel sad for them because they threw up all the time. Anyway, uh, they didn't want to put on their seatbelts, but my dad told them that he was not going to drive unless he put, they put on their seatbelts. So they did. And it's a good thing too, because the car crashed. Um, and the back, where my little sister usually sits, was completely destroyed. If she had been sitting there, she would be dead. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I'll show you some pictures. Uh, in the end they got home, but they, because they were driven home, but now our car is crashed, so we're basically, I think it's getting, it's getting fixed, so don't worry, but it's gonna be a while before we get it back, and our stuff is still all the way in that other village, in that other city, so, but we're getting it all dealt with, it's gonna be fine, anyway, and then the last news, we had a cyclone on Saturday, which was huge, and it came over all of Madagascar, so, you know, the f days beforehand we were, you know, lashing down our roof, because it's kind of wonky. Um, making sure every f everything was in a safe spot so it wouldn't get wet, things still got wet. But not in my room, which is funny, because it's under the top of the roof, under the pinnacle. And yet, my room is the driest place in this house. But it doesn't matter. Uh, so, yeah, we were just preparing. And then the cyclone came, and it was pretty big. But I made a video about it, so uh, I'm gonna make a video about it with lots of videos from other people also over the island who have videos. So I'll just link you to that if you want to see what it looked like. In the end, nobody died in our village. I don't know how it is in other places. We'll find out soon enough. Um, but in the down part of the village, eight houses were blown over. In the upper part, 14 houses. We didn't have all that much damage. One of our flashlights it seems to be broken because it keeps flashing, even when we tell it to stop. But other than that, we're all good. It was just mostly really wet. It didn't really matter whether you peed your pants or went to the toilet because you were going to get just as wet either way because our toilet is outside. So in the end, we just literally had a set of dry clothes and a set of wet clothes. And then whenever we had to go to the toilet or go outside, we put on the wet clothes so we could walk through the rain. Because our umbrellas are going to break, we were, we were useless because there was wind and that was going to ruin them. So we couldn't use the umbrellas. So, you know, it was, and our entire floor was wet. So it was a puddle and it's now, it's cleaner than it's ever been our floor now. Because my mother was literally just mopping the floor every 10 minutes. Um, but other than that, we're fine, so. I look directly across the valley, I can see a huge mudslide that was caused because the people burned the forest away there to plant cassava, but it didn't work out, uh, because it kept, uh, because it's too, uh, steep. And then the rain came and now there's a big mudslide there. But on the other hand, uh, the people have been, uh, really great with, you know, immediately fixing things because their houses had fallen down, they had to have to sleep at other, at other people's places. So they immediately started fixing things the moment they woke up, so that was really cool to see, you know, everybody was in the spirit of, we went through this and we are gonna fix this, you know, so we've lived through a disaster and now we're gonna fix things. So that was nice, they even asked us how we were doing, so that's cool. Hij zit nou ergens boven het huis, denk ik.
Ja, hij komt nu denk ik rechts langs. Ja, die is hij weer. Waar al? Wat zie je land? Ik zie hem niet. Waar is hij? Oh, daar. Wat zie je land? Nou, leuk. Anyway, that was this video. Thanks for watching. Here's to a month without drama. As if. Anyway, see you.